Hello and welcome to another Z and Zed show. My name is Z. And I am Zed. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about filament. All things filament. Lots of filament. Filament to share, filament to give away, our favorite filaments, our recommendations for filaments. Lots of filament discussion. We don't know anything about filament. No. No, no not much. Nothing at all. Hey, just because you have a lot of something doesn't mean you actually know and understand it. True enough. True enough. Oh, so, uh, before we talk about filament, let's talk about what what's been going on this week. You've been you've been making some things. I've been making some things. Always. And uh, hello, everyone in chat. Everyone that's that's joined us this evening. Make sure you uh, click the thumbs up button and also enter the giveaway for some filament. Yeah, thanks to the Polymaker, you can win a spool uh, globally, worldwide, anywhere. You can receive a giveaway, you can enter. And if you're in the US or Canada, you'll be receiving coupons to the store. More details on that when we do the draw. Mm -hmm. See, we almost have this down. Like, we, we're almost, we kind of appear professional to some degree. Just like a, a little bit. <laughs> hey, this is our, what, what show? This, this is the eighth, eighth the eighth on YouTube. Eighth show. So. I wonder. How yep. many times we're going to shuffle today? <laughs> About 700, I'd say. 700, okay. All right, so uh, Austin, what what have you been working on this week? What did you make this week? There is a brand new mm. model from Gulsifer. Let me post this in chat. Uh, it's kind of cool. I like it. So let me post that over here. I like myself a little bigger. Hey, okay. stick it up. Right here. <laughs> this is the articulated um, Easter bunny. Funny oh, girl cute. figure. Yeah. So it's one of the, the ghost style where the legs actually pop on in. So it prints like that. And they pop on out. So it's kind of fun. Oh, fun. Yeah. And this one, I'll demo a little bit later, but this is Plymaker's Keller Changing PLA. Ooh. So I'll try to make it change color. The green doesn't show as much, mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll show that off a bit later. <laughs> actually, the same filament. <laughs> This is ah. this is uh, good old Fixum Dudes uh, Flexi Shamrock. So I have one too. Yay! It's a really fun one. I like how it like folds. It's I know. Funny. I've been like I've been just messing around with this. It's it's a fun toy or figure or whatever. It's it's, it's nice. Yeah. It's cute. And yeah, and there's and there's one that you could wear around your around your neck too, and. Um, when I posted my make on printables, I actually said that it could be used as a coaster, too. So, it's really? very... So, behind me, I have Fixum Dude's latest garland. And I'm not going to take it down because it's, it's, it's up there very nicely. This is... I tested a couple of the, the, the prototype things for it. So, this is... Um, I call this, uh, you tasted the rainbow and then it came up because I didn't have the colors right. <laughs> this was one of the original rainbows. <laughs> Not quite there. So so, so the, the rainbow that I've done now to fix it is much better. But I just, oh, hi, Ginger. I just Hold pulled on. this off the printer. Uh, last, deck, week, last week, of course, was my birthday. And, you know, we celebrated and we had fun. And I got from pink and red, I got this really cool butane um, heat gun soldering everything. And I've actually used it like the knife part of it. But uh, K2 Perfect Kevin it, right? designed Kevin designed this really neat station for the um, for that fits all of the all of the all of the little bits and pieces. So I have a little soldering iron station. And this is in uh, Polymaker Gold, uh, the dark purple, and also I did some of the the purple gold uh, silk. So it's really fun. Oh, my okay. my school colors like were purple and gold. So, and I thought it was very like very regal. And this does this looks kind of like a lightsaber, a very dangerous one. So that, that's um, that's an interesting looking tool. Yeah. So. You, uh, yeah, you turn the butane, the heat on and this knife gets very hot or you can, if you, you can use it for instead of a, a heat gun, but you have to be really careful with it. So, hmm. but it fun, is, fun. it is fun and it has a whole soldering kit too. 
And I'm going to put that way far away because it's me. Um, <laughs> but the other thing, I, I worked on some Star Wars things this weekend, which, you know, these things happen. So um, Graffite designed two different um, Kowakian Ka uh, monkey lizards. The first one, I, I started to slice it and I'm like, I'll get back to it later. Actually, I did lots of Star Wars things, but uh, so this was the second Kowakian monkey lizard. So this is on a pillow and it's, it's super cute. I can almost hear him say, ha 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 ha. You know, they laugh with uh, Jabba the Hutt. And uh, uh, anyway, so there's a Kowakian monkey lizard. And this is in the olive green polymaker. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. So this one, I played with the supports a bit. I did have to you know, sacrifice a little bit, but it was, it turned out great. Uh, great and then I also did, uh, I also did um, Wexter's uh, new uh, Anzellan and, and, uh, and Grogu. And uh, another friend, so that's a friend of Maker Deck, of course, and a friend. And then another friend of Maker Deck, uh, Bob, built over bot, he's designed these little mando bunnies so they are really cute because they can hide little treasures for your easter egg hunt and oh this one doesn't have a treasure no treasure because have. you know yes you can have treasures inside and i bet you put little, little mini triangles inside you could put you could put little mini triangles inside uh i found out that you cannot fit uh canadian toonies so I couldn't put $2 inside. Oh, I have a ginger chew. There you go. So ginger. I do too. See? I do too. Ginger, ginger is very much ginger. Me. Don't chew her though. Okay. Anyway, so this is by Bob, built over bot. Um, so these are really, really cute. He's done a couple different Star Wars ones. And we'll put the link in. Uh, we'll put the link uh, below. Yeah. Awesome. So those are, that's my, my sort of fun fun makes for the last couple of days yeah. and hello feisty kitty we've got lots of people oh ian douglas is in chat um i would like to mention tomorrow ian douglas is celebrating pi day and he's on his stream on twitch which we'll link to um he's going to have a couple different uh different drop contests and things like that and he's also over on maker deck uh, lasering some of the prizes so he's got a, a laser engraver and he's doing that. Also, we have a really cool printer over on Maker Deck. Hmm. It's big. It's very big. Is it, is it it's live? in black and white. Oh. Yeah, nice. Krusty is Krusty yeah. is using a, a very big printer. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Go check out Maker Deck. Yeah. Not right now. Watch our show first. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. yeah, yeah. Go to Maker Deck. Figure it's all it's always on. You'll always be able to see it. Except yeah. this and show you can watch in the future because it's gonna rerun. So yes, live TV or rerun. I like being in streams personally. So I think both put one, make it up, up one monitor and then this stream yeah. another. That's yeah. the solution. Zombie has a tail. I do. <laughs> My tail is showing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Krusty's uh, stream is in black and white. So mm, mm, yeah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So okay. Projects. Uh, projects. Uh, do you have any projects? I'll let you go first. Well, uh, I, you can't really tell, but the bottom row of my filament rack, I reorganized like with the color wheel from like cool to warm or warm to cool. However you look at it. I call that a rainbow. Um, <laughs> it is a rainbow for sure. <laughs> um, and what am I working on? Uh, Working on a lot of Maker Deck programming, uh, working on getting some more people helping out with the studio. So probably tomorrow during Coffee Talk, I will produce um, our volunteer form for everyone to see if there's opportunities that you might want to take with with Maker Deck. So I've been doing a lot of um, a lot of behind the scenes, that kind of that kind of admin stuff. Um, yeah, and like just printing fun things that I've wanted to print for a while. I didn't yeah. show this yet. The clock spring. Yeah. It's nice. like these, these kind of fun things. Um, yeah. 
So we're just, we're, we're nice and busy. Uh, it's a busy season and you have some plans coming up too. Do you I not? do. I could talk about that in a minute, but let me show off mm -hmm. my project. Uh, maybe let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can, uh, this one. Yeah. Ooh. So not the best quality print. That's not really as much my concern, but what is, is this adapter thing that I made. So this is the Triangle Lab STD6 hot end. It's ridiculous and um, I need to make a mount for it. So I designed this on my stream and went through a couple iterations. It's actually printed in a very fun filament, if you can guess what that is. But this has been my project, is getting this thing a custom mount design. This is for the KP5L and installed and working. It's all pretty much good to go. The wiring is uh, atrocious, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> no. So, but that was, thought that was pretty fun. <clears throat> Oh yeah, and I also have to put the new uh, motherboard in my Prusa this week. <laughs> That's fun. That's a project. That, that'll be a thing. So mm. we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'm sure it'll be fine. But uh, you know, these are things that we well, that we need to do. So, uh, but tonight we are going to be talking about a couple things. One is something that you have planned soon, and what is yeah. that? So why don't I, I can throw a link to my channel, but on Twitch, I do stream <laughs> like every other night or so. And on the 25th, I'll be going over my one year anniversary or so of printing, aka when I got my first printer, the Ender 3. So I'll be doing something a lot funner than I originally thought. I'm calling it a give back stream where um, I have a increasing list of sponsors and people who are giving away stuff uh, such as LDO, West3D, Polymaker, Fabrico, uh, 3D Gloop, aka Gloop, um, and <clears throat> I, I'm assuming more. So there's gonna be a lot of fun stuff on that stream. It's gonna be quite the party and that's the 25th. So I'm aiming for Saturday at around 2 p.m. Eastern if you want to remember that. So very good odds to win stuff. It'll be fun. Um, just kind of celebrating the year of printing and the awesome community that I've been involved with. Like you guys are amazing. Everyone here is incredible and it's been a pleasure to have printed and learn from everyone. So thank you. And I hope to see you there. Yeah, I think it'll be really fun. And I have to say, um, for a lot of us, uh, at the end of the day, going into your stream, it's a lot of fun. It's very, very relaxing. Um, and we sort of geek out and, and everybody, I think everybody learns something and, uh, yeah, we talk about food stuff. explosion. <laughs> yeah. We talk about Tim yeah. Hortons muffins and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, All kinds yeah. of stuff. we have a, there, there's a great crew in there. So, uh, if you, if you we are around ginger, later, course, at, always. Yeah, ginger, we'll see more ginger content. There. yeah, there's always something, always something fun going on. And Austin's always, uh, trying to print something. So <laughs> try to print something. That's the goal. Try to print stuff. Has it happened? Try Sometimes. To print stuff. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. So cool. um, during a coffee talk, uh, I think last week, we started talking just randomly, spontaneously started talking about filament. And we ended up having a really interesting conversation. And uh, a lot of it had to do with, you know, uh, when, when people started out printing, what they thought printing what, what they would want to print with, what they they didn't understand, what filament they were using. And um, I thought it, it we could spin that into, certainly into something that we would want to have a conversation about. So uh, I do have my very first spool of filament. Um, I still have it. Shameful, shameful. I have painter's tape because that's, that's what I use to keep the filament before, of course, before we used uh, proper clips on the spools, but this Mine's is worse. the- It's not even clipped, it's just loose. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so this is a Polymaker uh, Arctic Teal. 
Polychera. So, and that was my, that was my very first, uh, that was my very first filament. And then my second filament is actually over on the other printer and it's a Esun bronze. Um, and I thought, oh, I'm going to use this silk filament. I'm going to print all these beautiful things. And I didn't realize what I was getting into with silk filament. So that's, that's definitely a thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess the, the question that, that uh, I think we'll ask at the end is, so if people in chat want to think, uh, put a little bit of thought into it, um, if, you, if you were going to, let's say you had the chance to give someone a 3D printer that never printed before, what would you put in a filament starter kit for them? So yeah. that's something to think about, but we're gonna, I guess we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about filament now. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have my first spool as well. This is mm -hmm. a Sunlu Grass Green PLA. So, there was a lot of reasoning behind this. And it took a long time to figure out what color I wanted. It was so hard because I didn't want black. I didn't want white. I wanted something fun. Something that I can print some fun stuff in. And I could probably find it in the corner over there. But I printed out a Flexi Rex. That was one of my first prints. A Flexi Rex in this color. It looked awesome. It was like the perfect color for it. And this stuff printed very well. In fact, all my prints on my original Ender without any mods were mm -hmm. like very good. Very good. Uh, goes to show that you don't actually have to mod your printer to um, get better results. Just faster speeds and more reliability. So yeah, it still have some left. I decided not to finish it off on the the lac table I printed and I'll keep it. Maybe we'll do something special with it. Mm -hmm. But it's a nice color. I like it quite a bit. And it's served me well. And I still have a little left. Probably all tangled, but <laughs> I'll deal with that. Yeah, so a lot of people, when they start 3D printing, they go to Amazon or if they're at Micro Center or whatever. I think a lot of people just sort of grab whatever filament they think they like that, that looks cool. Um, I know for me, my one of my first mistakes is I almost bought the wrong size filament hey. because I was like, oh, this is on sale. I'm going to grab this. Um, and uh, yeah, you go for, maybe you go for looks or maybe you think I'm going to print uh, really practical, durable, whatever. And then you end up buying like ABS or something like that. So yeah. I think that's like first time or mistake if you don't do a lot of research. Um, you do end up, uh, you do end up in a little bit of, uh, a little bit of trouble. So, uh, I don't know, yep. I guess. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So why don't we talk about PLA first? Cause that's going to be mm -hmm. one of the more common materials used for pretty much all entry level 3d printing. Um, it'd be a good idea to go over, I guess the main different types, which is, mm -hmm. uh, the main two you'll run into is PLA and then a PLA plus. So, why don't I actually grab some samples <laughs> I have out front of me. And I will say, I have only printed with PLA. Um, PLA Plus, PLA Pro, PLA, oh, okay. but yeah, all of it, silks, yeah, only PLA. Yeah. 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 So, what is it? Polylactic acid, something like that, is mm -hmm. the base ingredient in these. It varies significantly. The formula varies significantly brand to brand. So don't just assume that you're buying a PLA of one brand versus a PLA of another brand versus a PLA of another brand. Um, there are only so many different main um, raw types of uh, PLA, but they do vary and how you extrude them, etc. Even you can mix stuff into a base PLA and still have it not be a PLA plus. So what is PLA plus? That's probably the best mm -hmm. thing to start with. A PLA is pretty much just a raw PLA, so whatever the raw PLA is, and it's dyed. That's typically what it is. It's not designed to have extra additives added to it for increased performance. It's just the most raw, basic PLA you can get. Uh, now, this is a little bit special. This is Polymaker's PLA, which mm -hmm. I feel is a step above just your typical like plain PLA. Um, the stuff prints very well for me. And you can kind of tell 
if it's a PLA plus, if it likes to print in higher temperatures, that's kind of a sign that um, maybe it's a bit it's a bit different. So um, this stuff has worked out very well for me. This one is steel gray. Mm -hmm. So I don't use a ton of regular PLA, but when I do, it works well. And then there's PLA plus. This is where most marketing is. This is what most people buy. They think PLA plus is, it's plus, it's better. It, it's better in every <laughs> way. Well, in some cases it might not be better. In some cases it might be significantly better. So PLA plus, this is Plumaker's PLA Pro, PLA Pro, which is a PLA plus. It's just a regular PLA with different additives. So maybe they want mm -hmm. to increase the impact resistance, maybe increase the uh, the overall strength, etc. Um, there's no consistency, like what practical printing says, there's no consistency between any PLA plus. Just okay. keep in mind that it probably is focused on improving some technical qualities of it. And even then, you don't know that for a fact. <laughs> they could just be using it for marketing too. So if they think their PLA is good, they can call it a PLA plus. So there's absolutely no meaning behind it. But yeah, see, Geek Toy Box says uh, Plus and Pro are generally the same. No, it's up to whatever you want to call them. Polymaker could have called this PLA Plus, but they called it PLA Pro. Why? Uh, it's all marketing. So yeah, this is uh, magenta. Yeah, it's PLA gorgeous. Pro. <laughs> it's, it's a nice yeah. color. It's actually what Maker Vikings printed over here. It's a, it's a nice color, it's a bright. So I prefer to have PLA Pro from Polymaker for my like standard filament. If I'm gonna go print something, mm -hmm. I want a plain color, I go for PLA Pro. It does have a bit more structural um, qualities to it versus the regular PLA. That being said, the regular PLA is more stiff. So if you're going for extreme stiffness, you might wanna go with that. So just look into the filaments and compare them before getting them. Yeah, I was going to say my favorite is is the the Polyterra. <laughs> and I was going to show you but I only have like that much left Aww. of the, the purple lavender. So, I need to I I need to get any. some of that. But I actually more than anything, I have I have a lot of silks. Um it's just what I ended up with from the beginning and I've learned how to to print with them and yeah, I I love my silks. I tend, yeah. to, I don't, when I do something that um, needs a little more structure, yes, I'll use a, a different, you know, a, a different filament, but I, I definitely love my silks. I love my glitters. I love all those, those sorts of, I like to, I like to give myself some trouble. <laughs> well, it's more fun. And yeah, it is more fun. That's the thing we can talk about is which filament do you select? Uh, apparently this print stopped. <laughs> apparently not that, not that killer. <laughs> uh, oh, move out of range. Interesting. Huh. All right. Well, I guess that's an error in the, uh, in the flippers. That's okay. That print wasn't coming out good. But silks, mats, um, anything that's not a plain PLA, especially mm -hmm. the galaxy slash, um, sparkle, those types of filaments, they add so much extra to a print that if you're going to print something, it's almost worth yeah. getting something like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is the, the Capricorn uh, shining purple. Yeah. I have, I just, I almost everything yeah. I have is fun. <laughs> this is Sparta 3D's galaxy purple. Um, it's ah. a nice, it's a nice purple. I don't know if you have any of that, but yeah. So it's so much, <laughs> so I've much got, different than regular PLA. Yeah. This is the nebula purple and then the, uh, the burnt titanium. Yeah. We, we, I have fun. I have a lot yeah. of fun. Like this is a model in galaxy dark blue. Let's see if it'll actually, we love the galaxies. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Galaxy dark blue. The, I like the galaxy. This looks nice, but you know, yeah. get some filament that you're going to have fun with. Find a couple models, say, Hey, what color would that look good in? If you're going to standardize on a color, Dark blue 
and blues generally look pretty good. Like you can mm -hmm. make a lot of things in blues. Yeah, or you could go crazy and get something like a protopasta nebula, which ah. is very expensive, but worth every, you know, it's, it's so worth it for the it's joy that like, it's so gorgeous. Yeah. So I mean, just have, you know, if you want to have fun, but the, the most important thing is to, um, my, yeah, well, actually my floor is crooked. Someone just said my rep blocks, rep blocks look crooked. My floor is a little bit crooked too. So eventually I'll, you know, we'll, we'll just, we'll just all, all lean but, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> I'll lean this way. Um, the, the, um, yeah, I think what you want to do is you don't want to waste the filament. So make sure that when you're, when you're slicing, um, some people do temp towers. I do my, I tend to do my test discs. Um, or you can do a very small print to, uh, to, um, to figure out, you know, how your filament's going to turn out because before you go and do something like this with a filament that is basically $50 Canadian, a spool, you want to make sure you know what yeah. you're doing. So, yeah. and that's also where you want to, you want to choose the right filament. If you're, if you're going to be making something that's structural, you don't want to be using a silk. So, um, yeah. So let's talk yeah. about that. So structural mm -hmm. filaments. PLA and PLA plus are both pretty good. Uh, like any basic PLA is generally good. Um, a life pro tip, if you're looking to increase the strength of your prints, increase the temperature. The hotter you extrude, the better layer adhesion you get. And that's what typically fails on a print is your layer to layer adhesion. So printing hot within the bounds of your printer can mm -hmm. make a noticeable increase in strength. But if you want stuff to look really good, uh, it, there's a little bit of a trade-off. Um, galaxies, sparkles, those generally don't affect the actual strength of the filament as much as some of the others. So, silks. <laughs> Here's an example of a Polymaker dual color silk. This is their uh, Caribbean. Caribbean. It's like... Uh, mm -hmm. What do you mean colors? It's like a green blue. It's a nice print. Yeah, green blue. Know. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, so something like this, it looks really good, but the silk, um, I'm not gonna say this correctly, but the silkiness of it affects the layered adhesion significantly. Um, the, the fact that it's a silk means that layer to layer, you can have very poor adhesion. So you have to print very, very hot. I typically print silks at around 230 uh, C. But then if you have a printer that's prone to heat creep, you might run into issues with that. So keep in mind, uh, it's a strong balance between temperature and mm -hmm. heat creep. Yeah, Elast elastomer. Yeah, elastomer, the, I think it's, it's the equivalent of putting a little bit of TPU in there or something like that. Um, yeah, he, I'm not, he I'm not a printing scientist. Yeah. I, he made the mistake of using silk for spool holder. It didn't end well. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> and, and that's one of the things that you do when you're starting out. You're like, oh, this is really pretty. This can be the most beautiful spool mm -hmm. holder ever. And then it's like, snap. Yeah. Now the you second can. you get a heavier spool of filament. You can use silks for structural applications. Mm -hmm. If, if you significantly increase the walls, the, the infill, essentially, if you add extra material to counter the layer adhesion issues, then mm -hmm. it's better, not perfect. Um, I have another silk I wanted to share, it's not the bottom. So for silks, you have regular silks, which are just single color, uh, kind of mm -hmm. like this. Magenta, this is yep. Polymaker's Magenta. Um, it's really nice, it has a nice clean look and a nice clean shine. Again, print yeah. it hot and you'll get a very good shine. If your PLA yeah. uh, silk prints are coming out cloudy, kind of matte, your temperature is not mm -hmm. hot enough or you're printing too Yeah, fast. and also you can do things like flexies with silk, but again, you want to make sure that you you have, um, you certainly, yeah, you, you have good infill and and you yeah. make sure the temperature is right and, and everything. So yeah, this is yeah. The, the silk lime. But. If you want to do stuff that's a little more fancy, such as this dual color. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is Polymakers. So like one side is gold, the other side is is purple. This is how it prints. Oh. Uh, I got lucky. Mm -hmm. 
um, these are very fragile. <laughs> They're mostly decorative. So if you're going to go for a silk, just consider it decorative. And they do mm -hmm. work for flexies like, like this guy right here, but just be careful with it. Yep. The other thing that you can do is do like I just did is I start out with a base of silk. Then I have the, um, what's the dark purple? Is that PLA pro or plus? I can remember. PLA and pro. then, yeah. And then I also did another layer of the, the silk, the purple gold. And then I did, then I did the, the, the PLA pro on top. So you could, you can, for something like this, if you want it to be, you know, nice and durable and, and whatever you can, you can play around with, with layering for, uh, for good, you know, for good structure. So mm -hmm. that's another yep. thing that you can do. They do blend. You can mix different PLAs together. You mm -hmm. can just do color swaps. That works fine. Uh, just note that the layer adhesion might not be the best switching between different types of materials. Yeah. Keep an eye on it. Definitely keep an eye on it and, um, experiment, experiment with mm -hmm. things that you don't, you, you don't mind if they, if they break. An example of this. All right, here is a really fun one. Um, mm -hmm. I, it's gonna have a hard time showing, but this is a TH3D's, um, it's a dark red, green, blue. I forget which oh, color wow. this is, but <laughs> it's a tri-color silk. So there's tri-color oh, wow. silks, there are quad-color silks, there's all kinds of them. And the effects of a tri-color, um, they're astonishing, like they're really cool. This is a little boomerang that I printed. But if mm -hmm. you look at the middle, it's kind of like a rainbow effect. Oh, wow. How it blends That's in different fun. colors. Yeah, and depending on which angle you look at, depending on the uh, the profiles, it can look really, really interesting. So try try some different styles of, of colors. If you're going to buy one, just buy the fancy ones. I'm liking this, the TH3Ds. Those seem to print pretty well. Um, is there I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to save, save some, I saw a couple questions here, so I'm going to save them yeah. for the end. I have some, uh, I've seen some questions too, and we'll answer those at yep. the, the end. Mm -hmm. Probably next, Polyterra. It's kind of a unique one. Yeah, yeah. And I have a question for you. So, Polyterra, right. uh, this mm -hmm. is Polymaker's matte filament. Um, you can buy other matte filaments as well, but Polyterra is such a interesting filament that people either have incredible times printing or they just can't print at all. So it's best used for decorative models again. So decorative models <laughs> like this, um, this is cotton white. It's actually draft PLA and they're PLA plus red. So it's a mix of different colors, but it's all essentially Polyterra. It's a matte. Uh, and you, you can't see like layer lines. You, you, you can't, it's, it's, and we have a mod bot in chat. So hello. Mod bot. Hey, <laughs> welcome I... in. He has good merch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Happy um, to see you. Welcome on in. So yeah. Yeah. And congratulations Matt. too. Don't forget. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh geez. A uh, mod bot. Uh, he had a real proud... birthday. He had a, a real, real, real birthday, birthday last week. Yes. <laughs> that must've been yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, so. so hope hope the family's doing well. We're we're happy to have you here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for stopping by. Um back to our regular schedule program, Matt Filament. And so, yeah. And Elizabeth will answer your question. Uh we we saved your questions for uh for later, so definitely we will answer that question. So All you right. see right here, it's already mm -hmm. snapped at the, one of the hinges oh, because you snapped my neck. I, <laughs> <laughs> Just half of it. You're, you're good. Great. Um, okay. Matt, uh, Matt PLA's Polyterra has very low layer adhesion. It looks great, but it does not, it does not hold up well for structural applications. Just keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of people, they buy this as their main filament. They try to print something strong in it and it might work out. It might not. If you're going to, same thing with the silk. Make sure you're beefing up the walls and everything mm -hmm. to make sure. And print it hot, 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 hot. Um, I print Polyterra at about 230 degrees. It makes the finishes almost perfect. Like, very good. This was printed on the Kaiwu. Yeah. And it looks my, like it was injection molded. Uh, yeah. My 550% Maker Deck logo, that's all Polyterra. And it's so beautiful and smooth and 
-hmm. Yeah, it's not too shiny, so the light doesn't, you know, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, reflect off it too much. So, um, yeah. Oh yeah. So, so, so Polyterra. We have that, a question. We we can answer this question because we're talking okay. about Polyterra. So, is it PLA based? Yes, it is. It's a special formula of PLA. Um, I don't know the specifics, but all I know is that it is a a special developed matte filament, and it is not not good for structural applications for functional parts. But unfortunately, I don't think the branding really gets across because when you buy stuff, how do you know if this filament is going to be any good? Do you know if the polyterra is going to be good for structural? No, you don't. So. That's kind of a rough one. And I was going to ask you, what was your experience with Polyterra since that was your first, your first spool? Well, <laughs> um, the first thing I decided I was going to print was um, a cosmetic brush holder that Krusty designed for me, which was, um, I think, on the Focus, which was a 16 hour print. Mm -hmm. First, I didn't realize that, of course, when you're printing something that's very flat and takes up a lot of your bed, that you're going to have corners lift. So I didn't understand that. And I had, even, even when I print at point two, of course I was trying to print it as fast as possible. and didn't understand. Um, I do get, I do get layer lines with, you know, I'll, I'll get a couple, you know, I'll, I'll see layer lines. So yeah. it was, um, it was, uh, as you say, it is, it is very pretty, but it was pretty striped city. Lines. Yeah. It was straight pretty city. well. Um, I, I do know that Polyterra is very nice if you wanted to, um, you can sand it a little bit and mm -hmm. it's very easy to paint. So if I yes. wanted, to, for example, with this Grogu, I could, I could certainly paint it and, and have some fun with it. But yeah, my first experience was, um, yeah, and see, that's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And the finish is really nice too. It's like a, it's, it's matte. It's, mm -hmm. it's like soft, feels soft. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. I know Hatchbox has has really good mats too, and Sp uh, Sparta has some nice mats. So uh, yeah, there's 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 lots that you can you can yeah. you can play around with. But yeah, you you want to make sure before you start buying, you know, in bulk, for example, you know what what you're getting into with with some some filaments. So. Yeah. So if you haven't tried it, I, I do recommend trying it at least once. They have um, mm -hmm. what are they called? Uh, uh, marble they have a couple marble colors so those are pretty cool mm -hmm. too there's a blue marble and then the regular white marble so if you win the giveaway that's today or any other stream feel free to try one no hurt just don't use it for structural stuff yeah my favorite is the lava red and mm -hmm. as i said the, the lavender purple but um oh and the charcoal <laughs> Yeah. I, d I just like all the poly chair. They're they're very like at least with poly make they're very oh. nice colors, but also when you have um, when you have a matte filament, it's yeah you can you can do a lot of a lot of really fun prints. A lot of people do um, busts and and those types of things with with the with the matte filaments. Yeah. And then this is kind of a, an example. So this is a PLA plus. Mm -hmm. um, this was because they made a it's a slightly less matte mm -hmm. it's a little more shiny has a little bit more of a shine to it uh, but it's stronger it's still not as strong as regular pla but it's a little bit of a balance so people people buy this thinking it's a pla plus meaning it's a really strong pla unfortunately that's not the case it's a really strong polyterra so it's a strong matte filament um if you have experience with this and if you printed off structural stuff, let me know. But it's pretty much regular Polyterra with a little bit of um, added bonus. Uh, this stuff prints really nice, though. Uh, I like to use these for kids' toys, for Flexies. Mm -hmm. um, so those are, it's really soft and the PLA Plus does add a little bit extra layer adhesion. Um, so keep that in mind if you're going to buy a mat. Maybe look at a mat like PLA Plus or something that's designed to be a little more structurally sound. Um, yeah, okay, there is, in, we can just do a whole episode of PLA. We should probably <laughs> yeah, wrap up the could. PLA with a couple more. Yeah, well, uh, a PLA that, that um, I have enjoyed working with, but a lot of people will freak out 
actually two different kinds of PLAs that I love I love playing with are uh, of course the the glow in the dark. So this is the uh, this is the Sparta uh, Galaxy Luminous Blue, which is it turns out it's beautiful. Nice. And then of course uh, this is the shining purple from from Capricorn, and this has lots of glitter in it. And so a lot of people recommend that you use a hardened nozzle for these. Um, and then other people will say, just make sure you change your nozzle after. So for glow decide, in the dark, yeah, people, you, well, <laughs> you will, you will need a glow. All right. So glow in the darks are actually one of the most abrasive filaments. Yes. Um, you can probably not even get through a single brass nozzle with a glow in the dark. So just don't <laughs> just to get a hard nozzle. I recommend tungsten carbide nozzles. But mm -hmm. if you have to, people do buy bulk nozzles. You yeah. can just replace it after. Um, just yeah. note that it probably won't look the same the whole way through because the hole will get larger. <laughs> yeah, be prepared. Just be prepared. Yeah. Like we said. Yeah. And and with glitters, the the one thing that you really want to do is is after you work with glitter, you either change your nozzle if you've done a lot of a, if it's if it's something that's got a lot of a lot of particles in it. Yeah, here's yeah. We're crusty saying less than um some yeah so yeah uh, uh, it, it's but, and, it's essentially abrasive and yeah and and with the yeah with the glitters you also want to make sure um with anything you you want to make sure that um the debris is sort of pull, pushed out too so otherwise you you end up with some some uh some artifacts the different types of glitters for sure and there's different amounts of fill so how much they mm -hmm. use uh, I found that, for example, Printed Solid, their glitter is like super duper intense. Uh, that probably won't pick it up at all, but this is their slime green. And this mm -hmm. thing is just coated in glitter. Um, it looks really nice. Same thing for the Sparta. Um, I have yeah. no idea on its abrasiveness because I use a tungsten carbide nozzle, but I don't know. Let me know what your experience is with um, glitters. Oh, and if you are gonna print it, if you don't print it hot, if you print it kind of cold around like 200, 205 C, you'll want to use a 0 0.6 nozzle. Yeah. Because the, the yeah. chunks are just a little bit too big and they might cause clogging issues. Mm -hmm. And always read. That's the other thing that you need to do is, is sometimes it's on the spool. Sometimes it's on the website for, for the company. Um, you know, they, they actually do recommend, for example, your, one of your favorite colors, the, uh, the galaxy blue right is that what yours yes blue, um yeah. that one it does it does actually say um to uh you know it says it says to uh use a 0 0.6 nozzle use a 0 0.6 yeah right it's just it, a recommendation so. just because of a lot of poor reviews on on galaxies and on um mm -hmm. those types of filaments because people just they just print with the stock settings a lot of profiles they print at like 200 c for some reason and that's not hot enough for a lot of these filaments. Mm -hmm. so. Read the reviews too. Read, mm -hmm. read. Sorry, read the positive reviews and also, yeah, read the advice on 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 when you're printing things. Oh. Yeah, and avoid buying these sort of bulk silks. It's it's very easy when when you're starting out printing. I know that's something we're gonna jump into, but like this is something that. The only thing I do with this now, these these sort of bulk silk mm -hmm. things is I, I do my vase mode flowers because it's a very easy way to get rid of it but that was that was a mistake that I made so yeah yeah I like the full size spools um, mm -hmm. honestly you'll find a use for them but that's a good point when you buy a spool and we'll talk about this when we talk about what do you start off with um, are you gonna buy pink for one model and then never use it ever again so there are options and I can give a couple mm -hmm. for buying smaller spools, uh, like multiple things of smaller spools. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about that at the end. Yeah. Uh, so is that everything for PLA? Oh, no. This, we'll hit, <laughs> well, all right. Speed run. Speed run. Iridescence. Yeah. One of my favorites. So this is Prushimint's, uh I forget the name. Mystic Green. Too many colors. Mystic Green. So no matter which angle you tilt it, it's always going to look the same uh, because it's based off of the light reflected on it. So that's an amazing color change. And of course, we burnt have burnt titanium too. Burnt titanium from Sparta 3D. 
that's another one of my favorites because of just like the look you get out of it. And it's the just, purple nebula. Yeah. They're just. Looks yeah. so interesting <laughs> in person. I, I can't take good pictures of these because you have to see the shimmer and the shine. Yeah, Mystic Green I have. Um, oh, I have Jabba the Hutt right here in Mystic Green. So yeah, it's it's gorgeous. And as you can see, like on the spool, it looks different than it looks here. You can see like a little bit of gold and and green and brown. And I painted his eyes red, so he's kind of scary. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. We have fun. Have fun with it. That's for sure. Yeah. So that's uh there's all kinds of others i'm just gonna name a few there's lightweight plas if you're looking for something mm -hmm. specific very very specific like for printing airplanes uh there are lightweight plas they are foaming plas so they print different mm -hmm. um they they print very different and you're not gonna be able to just use basic settings um, but luckily you probably won't run around those too much just don't buy a lightweight pla for standard printing um polymaker has what's called the um, a P or Polymax PLA, which mm -hmm. is an it's super incredibly tough, but also a little bit rigid PLA. They use it a lot for drones. Like this stuff is it's squishy, but it's nearly indestructible, and it's still rigid, so you can use it for stuff like drones or uh, this is used a lot in RC, not RC, but um, mm -hmm. like robotics because of the performance of it. So it's kind of like a PTG or ABS, but in the PLA, it's incredibly nice. And some other brands also have stronger PLAs, mm -hmm. but I don't have much experience with, with those. Oh, and while we're on PLA, I should sort of move up from what we were talking about. Um, one thing is also you end up with rainbow filaments. I'm not going to actually speak a lot about rainbow filaments because uh, there is a 15 minute video by filament stories that fully explains rainbow filaments. That's one different. thing that someone like me who's like, oh, rainbow, la 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 la, um, got really excited about rainbow filament. First thing I bought, I believe, was an Esun metallic rainbow. And it took forever to transition because the way that it actually worked is that it was just a spool of filament with lots of colors on it. And in order to get to the transition, you had to like have meters and meters and meters of one color. Um, another example of this would be the um, metal rainbow uh, from, from Sparta. I mean, there's mm -hmm. beautiful colors and I've had amazing prints, but it's not like you're going to have a, a full rainbow. Um, so just, yeah. just uh, pay attention to don't, well, actually, Watch watch filament stories video because it's a lot it's a, a lot uh, a, you know a, a deeper explanation and she actually unspools filament to show you you know how how fast fa how fast changing the color is and and she has a lot of advice on on that so next all right this is next. a new one for me mm -hmm. color changing so if you have a heat gun or something um, or if you have it in water <laughs> she looks can... like she's scared. <laughs> Takes a second, uh, but you can essentially. Yeah, there we go. Let's stand from the back. Um, these are really good in warm water. I printed up a a boat in the purple, and it's useful as like a bath toy because it's when it, when it's out of the water, it's purple. When it's in the water, it's pink. So this is Polymaker's green to lime. Oh, that's about nice. as much as it gets. So see, that's kind of cool. So just by holding it, it'll change color too. Um, it helps if your ambient temperatures are a bit warmer. So you can get some really cool effects if you're printing stuff to take pictures of. That's kind of cool. I have some of the purple too. This thing looks really cool in the uh, with the heat gun. Let's show that real quick. Uh, don't don't melt your spool by doing this. I definitely did not melt any any spoolage by doing this stuff. Yes, keep it at a safe distance. Yeah. So that's that. Oh, that's that's fun. Look at that. Uh, it turns clear at the end. Oh, so wow. if it's clear, it's it's too hot. Um, <laughs> yeah, like purple to pink to clear. So if you're putting this in your kid's bath and it turns white, 
Uh, yeah, don't put them in there. <laughs> it will be, it'll be cooked like a lobster. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So I don't know what the, the main or hot. topics you would use that. Too hot? Yes, too hot. Um, a lot of bath applications. There's some other mm -hmm. stuff too, but they look pretty cool. Well, I know one person that used it for their, the, the bed stoppers that they, that they, uh, that, that model it's, they use it for the bed stopper. Ah, that's right. I just used it in my, my printer. So I printed off a bracket for my hot end and the lower part, you can see where it's hot because it changes color. So it's kind of neat if you're making a new model, like a duct or something, you want to see how hot it gets, mm -hmm. you can print it in PLA. Yeah. And it'll just change color when it gets too hot. It's cool. Or hot. <laughs> hot I'm not even, you're the, you're the dad, you're the dad. So you, I, I can take all you the win. dad jokes. You win this round. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So that's, I mean, we can keep going on. There's more types and there's more stuff, but that's mostly PLA and that's mostly what people are going to print. But what mm -hmm. else is there? Do you have anything that's not PLA? Um, I do not. I'm, I've sort of made that, that choice, but there, I, I would like to eventually, um, try some, uh, some TPU. Okay. And that, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. And I, I know that other people print with, with, um, PETG or PETG. Uh, there's also ABS and ASA, depending on, you know, what, what your, what your projects are. And that's, you know, how do you select filament for a project? Yeah. One of, one of the things that you, Oops. you know, a lot of people are printing their own printers. They're, they're doing printer kits and why would you use, what filament would you use and, and why would you use it, Austin? So PTG is mm -hmm. really nice because you can print it almost like PLA, but warmer on a lot mm -hmm. of printers. No, you do have to dry PTG, it, even out of the box. A lot of times you have to dry it. So you, you'll have to also invest in a filament dryer in most cases. Um, but this can be used where you need higher temperature resistance. It's about 10 C higher than PLA. So in a hot car, it can be the difference between just like the tipping point of something melting or not melting. So if you have a specific use case for this, you can use it. It's not recommended for printer parts, ironically, because mm -hmm. it doesn't hold up well. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of reasons. I don't actually know them for fact, but it's not the best. Voron does not recommend them for custom printers. But if it's not under a lot of strain, like on a Prusa, mm -hmm. it works. So depending on how the model is, the parts are modeled, it can be used. Just keep in mind, it's not going to work in every application. Um, and don't expect it to be rigid. That uh, PTG is quite not rigid. It's one of the lesser rigid parts, which can be good for stuff you need to flex a little bit, but also mm -hmm. hold up. Uh, and so it a lot is of stuff what is they... designed. It's, and it's what they recommend for toys for tots. It's one of the, yeah. the one of the films yeah. that, and that's usually what they, they, uh, they send out. So it has very good layer adhesion. Uh, mm -hmm. so if you need something with very, very good layer adhesion, and it's one of the most watertight when you print it like a big vase, it's going to have, mm -hmm. um, the best characteristics. This is a torque wrench done in PTG and it's too stiff to really turn by hand, but. Um, it's specifically designed for that because it can flex a little bit, but still be strong. So, ah, Ron's mini RV life says PTG is stronger than PLA. In some fields, yes. In some fields, no. It all depends on which characteristic you're looking at. Ah. A lot of PLAs are actually stronger in some cases than PTG. So it's very, very specific to what application you're using it for. Um, so that's that. ABS, ASA, most people mm -hmm. in in this kind of environment are going to use it for printer parts. So yeah. this is an ASA. Uh, ABS and ASA print almost identically with ASA printing at slightly lower temps and tends to warp less. So I typically recommend ASA for beginners or someone mm -hmm. who's not running an enclosed printer. You'll need an enclosed printer for the best possible layer adhesion. And if you're printing a large model, you'll need it for warping. If you try to print ABS ASA in open air, you'll might run into issues. Um, also cheaper ABSs are very strong smelling, like they're bad, um, terrible VOCs. Yeah. <laughs> so keep that in mind too. 
I recommend a sealed enclosure, preferably like a pop-up tent that you can zip shut if you're going to print in ABS or ASA, or a specific printer that's designed to be enclosed like a Voron. Those are very good. Mm -hmm. And good ventilation. Yes, very good ventilation. Um, it's recommended to print a part, let it cool, and then once the part is cool, um, start venting your room. So turn on your exhaust fan, because when you're printing, you're going to want an exhaust fan out the window and then open up your tent. Let the air kind of circulate naturally. Don't let it circulate into your house. Don't let it go back into your vents. Air out of the house. Same thing for resin printing. Um, just air evacuating the house. So uh, once you keep those precautions in mind, you can print with the spine. And they're not always mm -hmm. that bad. You don't have to be as careful with an ABS or ASA versus like a resin, but you probably should. Especially if you have like something like birds. Birds are heavily affected by uh, VOCs or other small animals. Um, Including yeah, mostly children. Parts. Yeah, ch children. Yeah, the, there. You can throw them against Cats. the wall. They're yeah. fine. Cats. <laughs> uh, Ginger likes it. <laughs> um, also, ASA is great for outdoor use because it's naturally UV resistant. So it's not going to decolor. So you can print off stuff. Uh, Polyterra is actually UV resistant too. So once the <laughs> once the the grass starts coming out, I'm gonna put my pet rock outside. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's yeah. by Krusty. Krusty's in it chat. Is. So <laughs> yeah, Polyterra makes great outdoor models because it's uh, UV resistant and looks kind of cool. TPU. We'll touch that real quick. Not a lot of just general uses. Uh, although there's been videos recently, you can print regular models in TPU with like 100% infill. And they're very strong, like very, very, very strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What'd you do? You made a cool model. Um, it's cool. I don't recommend this for beginners. I just don't. It's honestly, I bought it more for the the fun of it, but you can stretch yeah. it like it's it's stretchy. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted it, and if you're going to get anything, get a TPU 95, something that's pretty hard, mm -hmm. uh, but is also flexible because you can print your own phone case. Yes, um, that's true. I haven't replaced this yet. This is still my original phone case. It's a little bit rough on the edges because of taking out of pockets, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit darkened, but it's still just TPU. It feels wow. like a case you'd buy from Amazon, but you can print it specifically to what you want. This is my favorite case ever. I will replicate <laughs> it if I have to make another one for another phone. I love the little circles with the bevels. It, it's nice. So TP95, print one of these for like a dollar. Yeah, and if you're subsector, you, you, you print uh, squeaky toys. Yeah. Or you turn everything, you turn everything into, you put a squeaker in it, which was actually an idea from Krusty. Everything can turn into a squeaky toy. So yep. she's, uh, she's known for that. And she also has tuned in her focus printer so it prints TPU. And a lot of people find that that particular printer prints TPU well. So <laughs> uh, a, a lot of direct drive printers, they yeah. can print TPU OK. Just keep in mind that it can cause issues. Just go slow if you don't know what you're doing. And print hot. Mm -hmm. You want to print TPU pretty hot. Um, something like a TPU 95 high flow from Polymaker can help out uh, overall printing ease of use because it flows easier and the main issue with TPU is that it gets restricted on the hot end and causes it to kind of like spring. Mm -hmm. So and don't yeah if you have a bamboo do not use TPU on the AMS it probably won't work well. Uh, yeah <laughs> do your yeah. research yeah do your research. That, and that's 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 sort of um, one of the, the big question was uh, how do you select a filament for a project? And I think uh, if you don't have a resource, sorry, you all have a resource called Maker Deck. You all have what a resource called, yeah, ex exactly. You can go into Maker Deck uh, in our Discord or just in our, our chat in general and, and ask these questions. And Absolutely. we will also, of course, you can go into zombie hedgehog streams or, or you know, other other streams and and um, use that to your your advantage um, and ask those questions. But um, definitely do do your research when it comes time to to print something. For example, we had a mom project, um, which I don't have right in front of me. Uh, it, it's the the bungalow birdhouse, 
And um, I believe that they chose either PLA Pro or Poly Max. I can't remember which one it was. Um, and and they're going to have this this how this birdhouse um, set up in a somewhat um, in a somewhat enclosed area, but it's for sparrows, and apparently they've had sparrows um, already. So uh, that's awesome. You know, they awesome. They they chose, but yeah, choose choose wisely. Choose yep. be smart and and do your research. Yeah, I can briefly touch on the engineering filaments. So we have mm -hmm. uh, Bert, Bert in chat, aka Bob, over on the Polymaker mm -hmm. Discord. Um, a lot of times you'll have a specific use for printing. Uh, this is a carbon fiber nylon print. It's the clock spring torture toaster. Um, <laughs> you did it in CF. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is like, I think it's about a $25 toaster. But I personally, I don't have a good use for it. The only thing I've ever printed that's semi-useful are printer ducts. So my tool head is carbon fiber nylon. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, um, over time it does creep. So the screws you have will slowly become less tight. Um, if you have it like this on a wall, it's going to slowly start to sag because of weight. There's a lot of issues with it. Uh, but if you have the right use case for pretty much any of these, so polycarbonates, um, nylons, what else is there? Uh, there's the crazy stuff I'm not even going to mention, but there's a stuff lot way out of, of budget. <laughs> yeah, a lot of engineering materials. So if you are in need of those, you might even want to outsource. So someone like um, uh, Grant from 3D Musketeers, they can print stuff probably a lot easier than you or any other yeah. printing service. Um, there's even overseas manufacturers, like you can submit your, your model, they'll print it and send it to you in whatever material you want. <laughs> or find yeah, someone with a lot of printers and a lot of experience on Maker Deck. They might be able yep. to help you out. <laughs> yep. A couple more fun ones I definitely want to touch on. Polysmooth mm -hmm. is such a unique filament. Um, PPB. So Polymaker designed this filament to be alcohol smoothed. It's, yeah, we just, wow. there was a wow, from in. There so. you go. Yeah, uh, so, oh, I started. it. I saved it for, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you just use a spray bottle. They have a little kit for it, but you can use any mm -hmm. spray bottle with the uh, isopropyl alcohol in it. And it's pretty cool. It makes it really shiny. So maybe you don't want that effect, um, mm -hmm. but it does hide layer lines quite well. It kind of makes it look like a shiny injection molded print when you're done with it. It's really nice for small figures or something like that. For scratching a cat. <laughs> yes, apparently. Uh, I have my giant snowman somewhere printed in poly smooth, but I haven't smoothed it yet. Yeah, it looks pretty nice, not smooth. What else is there? Um, support filaments. Yeah. Probably the last one I'll touch on, and then we can ask some questions. Yeah. So support filaments. There's a couple different types. Uh, bamboo users are essentially buying out all the support filament because you can use them in the AMS. Uh, there's different types. I don't know a ton about them. I don't even know where they are. <laughs> Regardless, there's not really much to show. They just, there's two types. There's one of them that's a breakaway support. So yep. it's specifically designed so it doesn't stick really well to any other materials. Um, I have one that's a breakaway support for PA12 nylon. So this is mm -hmm. a PA12 nylon and there's a support filament specifically for that. So I can use that if I'm trying to design something kind of intense. Um, so not like this, this wool, but maybe if I was, had something like this, I need to print it like that in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's no really good way of supporting it. You're not going to want to waste your expensive filament on supports. So using a breakaway support can be nice for something like that. And there's water washable or water yes. soluble. Not water soluble, soluble or resident. dissolvable. Yeah. Dissolvable. Yeah. <laughs> um, that it just cleans up with water. So you can kind of print your whole part in it and then just wash it off after. And it's almost like you didn't have any supports. So I'll be trying both of those out. It's useful for stuff with the, like the bamboo because it has a built-in AMS. And, but there's people in chat saying that it doesn't really work with their AMS, so. Um, <laughs> uh, soluble supports, no. Uh, breakaway, yes. Because water-soluble, yeah. I think the temperature has to be significantly different 
or something like that oh, okay or the purging it's something to do with something i don't know a lot about it if you're going to print with a water soluble you might want to look into a tool changer so mm -hmm. if there's any tool changers coming out like the xl that's something you might want to do instead yeah so we've we've covered we've covered a lot of filaments um we do have a couple questions and then we're going to sort of throw yeah. the question out there um elizabeth who who uh exited the chat but she did ask uh well she said she was going away for a couple minutes i don't know if she's back but she she asked two questions she said how do you do colors like that and then she said how can you use two different colors in one 3d printer now uh I do, uh, there, there's, I, I've done two different ways um, with, with just one extruder. So one is to do manual color swaps. So for example, the Focus does not have um, the ability to put the, the color swap G-code in. So I would have to eyeball, sorry, in the slicer, I would go through and I would sort of look at the timing or the layer, the layer height. If I had something with Octoprint, it would be a lot easier. Um, and so then I would set a timer and then go and check and then swap the fill. The, so then you just, you pause the, your printer and you eject the filament and then you put in the other filament. So that's a, a color swap. Or if you have a printer that's a little more advanced, at least if you have a single um, extruder, uh, then, then in the G code, it will beep and then you'll eject the filament again and, and, and do so for something like this, for example, there's three different colors. There's the, um, the Chrome and the, and the, uh, galaxy black and then silver. So if you want to, uh, to do that, um, I also do a lot of sort of layering color swaps, uh, as an alternative for, you showed. for these types of things. Yeah. Yeah, so. This is an MMU print, so this was actually mm -hmm. a color, automatic color swap, where if you look at like the star, the whole block is that same color. So you can do both. Um, mm -hmm. This is going to be a much harder method. You have to use an MMU, so it's some type of filament changing where it automatically changes materials. Otherwise, you'll be doing hundreds of color swaps, like thousands of color swaps. Uh, so Liz has been doing, I mean, so many color swap and it makes it makes <laughs> everything stuff look so i do good yeah 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 i have fun with color swaps that's for yeah. sure yeah yeah um, i don't have a ton honestly i oh uh, this is a good one this is the uh Pezla's star that's done in color swaps some models are my, designed yeah my valentine's vase yeah that's all the polyterras designed with that i had oh yeah i have one uh this guy right here this is my sorting tray. So I designed yes. it to be color swapped at different increments. And I put that yeah. in the in the model. So very easy to do. You can just put a pause in your G code. Um, you, you have to look up how to set up your printer and your slicer, but you can mm -hmm. pretty easily do it in most printers. Yeah, and, and in your slicer, even if you have, uh, I found, if if you have the automatic, like for example, in Prusa Slicer, you can automatic detect the, the filament swaps. You want to mm -hmm. take a look at it because uh, um, I thought I was doing great for the Z and Z and that I was doing. Um, this one turned out okay. This one I actually I just painted. Oh. That that's one of my gifts I got for my birthday was was paint. But see, it was all it was all the the neon green. So yeah, pay attention and and really look at the the layers um when you're doing those those types of filament swaps otherwise you're gonna end up you know spending a lot of time on something and missing out on on certain details so um yeah rc maniac has uh what is it um does he have the palette pro or what do you have rc's in chat he he has um of course yeah then you have the the mmu or the um, you know, where you can, you can change, do filament swaps. Your printer does the filament swaps. You have the enraged rabbit, rabbit, carrot feeder, carrot feeder, yeah. <laughs> which is a, a project you can fully build yourself. And it's mostly used for clipper. Um, it's similar to the, the Prusa MU, I believe similar concept. So you can either pre-slice the filament as it goes in, or you can manually eject, or the best method is just a tool changer. So we'll be seeing a lot of um, multicolor prints being developed. So when people are mm -hmm. designing models, 
even these crazy there's so many more now the 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 big bus and stuff designers are actually slicing them to be used directly with multicolor you can just yes. do a paint in the slicer you can go like i want some color there some color there but it takes so long um so with all these multicolor printers we'll definitely see more models directly being ready to print in multicolor yeah, like this is a wexter mini and i mm -hmm. believe that this is of bob carnes and i think bob, bob carnes printed this for me and mm. yeah i think he he has the the mmu um and uh he i think he painted this though like or sorry he you know he he set it up that way mm. so uh yeah there's yeah, lots of different ways you can change colors it's not super hard for example this is not this is not designed at all uh, i had to go in and manually hit each side make sure each layer was selected and it takes a long time yeah. I know. <laughs> Modbot in chat, he had a Santa Claus that he printed. Uh, I believe that was testing the bamboo, if I remember correctly. And he mm -hmm. missed, like, on the front, just, like, one section and didn't realize until after however a thousand, uh, well, many, many hours printed. It's like, eh, it's, it's rough sometimes. Bob, Bob, oops, where's Bob? Bob okay. says that he is slicer painted. So, yes, yeah. there's Bob. And hi, Bob. Yes. Nice to see you. <laughs> and Viking and lots of other people have joined us. So thank you. Um, yes, uh, a feisty, kit, feisty Kitty. She said that the kittens that she's printing on Maker Deck, there's 206 filament changes. So, you it's know, when not you're... not that many either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can go to like the thousands, the thousands of color changes, especially if you have like four colors and each layer needs four colors. Oh, it takes forever. That's why you see bamboos, they're consistently parked in the back pooping because they have to change color. Mm -hmm. Half the time is just changing the color. I saw that someone on TikTok, I open TikTok once a week, but it threw me right into this video where someone took their bamboo and they created a, a is it the Rube Goldberg? Where like the, the little poop comes out and it's like rolling. <laughs> it's like this whole big thing. So I thought that That's was funny. pretty... That was pretty fun. Um, we do have a couple questions, and then we're going to throw the question to chat. So, um, hey, Mr. Rick said, have you had any clogging issues with the glitter? And we sort of answered that. I didn't ever have clogging issues with the glitter, but I did have very strict instructions from lots of people in Maker Deck chat, the crusties, those types of people um, giving me advice. Um, and as we said, you might want to use a bigger nozzle or, or change out your nozzle for something like glitter. Yeah, I, I recommend if you're going to do a glitter print hot, it allows it to be a little more viscous mm -hmm. and uh, that'll typically help with the clogging. I haven't had any any notable clogs from any of the glitters. Um, I've tried a couple different kinds at this point, at least three brands. So I guess that's the solution. I also, I do use a tungsten carbide nozzle when I'm printing glitters, mm -hmm. just in case it's not it's not PLA, so it's gonna print a little different. So mm -hmm. just in case, I like to use Tungsten Carbide. Hard nozzles are okay, but you have to print even hotter. That's another issue. People will take a, a hardened steel nozzle and use the same settings as you would with brass. It's gonna make the filament print a lot colder, so you're gonna run into clogging issues a lot more. So if you're buying a nozzle specifically to print something that has abrasives, You'll need to increase temperature a lot, a lot more. All right. And speaking of temperature, uh, uh, Ron's mini RV life says, what temperatures do you print on PLA plus? PLA plus, um, a good range, a starting point if you're printing slow. So like stock settings for an Ender 3, where you set it at 25 millimeter second walls, uh, 210 is fine. But if you're printing a little bit faster, especially with these faster printers, 220 is now my standard baseline. So pretty much all filaments I print at 220, all PLAs, all standard mm -hmm. PLAs, some PLAs. <laughs> They're all very different, but uh, a typical PLA plus or even a PLA I print at 220. If you're printing very fast, then 230. So mm -hmm. run some tests. This is where you do actually want to run a temperature tower. It'll... I've never done one. <laughs> <laughs> It'll show you exactly where mm -hmm. it bridges best. Uh, of yeah. course, you have to pro or calibrate your bridging settings, but you can see where it's going to fail, where it's going to droop. And at lower temps, it might bridge better. But don't just automatically print at the lowest possible temp. 
because it looks the best. There's a lot of issues. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, hey, Mr. Rick had a question. Uh, isn't uh, PETG better for food stuff too? So food safety, food, yeah. So I guess. Nothing directly off your printer is yeah. food safe. Not going to be food safe. Uh, there are better filaments. So PETG is the best, just one of the best off the printer. Because of the increased layer adhesion, um, it, you're worried about the little voids when you print mm -hmm. that bacteria can get into. Uh, when something's injection molded, it's done in one solid piece. Mm -hmm. So there's no voids. But with 3D printing, there's lots and lots and lots of voids. So no matter how much you clean it, it might hold bacteria. Uh, what I recommend if you're looking for food safe is look for a food safe epoxy or resin yes, that you coat it exactly. in. That's yeah. what you'd want to do. Yeah. Yeah. If I wanted to use this cup, then I would. I would definitely. Actually, I would definitely use the epoxy. I think a poly smooth is actually one of the 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 best. Um, you have to do a little bit of post processing, but in terms mm -hmm. of transmission, because it smooths out the layers, it doesn't give an area for bacteria to go into. Yeah. So, and I will say for the people that are talking about food safety, for for example, with a cookie cutter. You can use it once. Um, some people have put it through the dishwasher and because they're baking. But the other thing you can do is after you use the cookie cutter, you can um, use it for clay. You can use it for Play-Doh, those sorts of things. So then it's not something that, that you're, you know, you're consuming. So that's a, that's a fun way to, uh, to reuse. You could drop them off at a daycare or something if you really wanted to. So. You can, you can wash them well. You're just worried about over time, just bacteria uh, yeah. growing. Um, just so like you can anything. sanitize it as best as possible. You can reuse cookie cutters too. You're mm -hmm. cooking the cookie. So if you're, if you're using cookies that you cook, the, the bacteria- Yeah, you're not, using a you're not using a cookie cutter for raw chicken or something. Yeah, so. <laughs> hopefully not. And I wouldn't run anything through the dishwasher. The reason why a yeah. lot of this isn't food safe is because you can't run it through dishwasher, can't hit Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And then you'll end up with very warped cookie cutters too, <laughs> no matter what. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Bob made a really, really good comment. And, and this is, this is something that um, was sort of brought up in, in the coffee talk. Um, I was saying the mistakes that I made when I first got a, a printer, I went for pretty filaments. I didn't do any research. I ended up with a, mostly silks. I ended up with some of these really cheap silks that, like I said, they only work in vase mode. Um, I, I, so I'm still using them up that way. Uh, and and um, I just got excited about you know starting to print. So I didn't I didn't really do any research in, into uh, into what I was, I was I was getting. But a couple suggestions came up then. Uh, but Bob's comment is true. Use high quality filament. That's step one. Um, the only, the only time I would ever sort of disagree with that is when you're first starting out, because if you use something that's cheap, you're learning, at least I found in my experience, I was learning a little bit more about really dialing in the settings, the, the infill, the, you know, all of those sorts of things. Um, so using a cheap filament that I didn't feel bad about wasting, um, that was helpful. So that's the only time I would say, um, I would sort of, I, you don't disagree with Bob, but you know, <laughs> um, that's where I would say it, it was good for me to have filament that I had only spent $20 on as opposed to something that I spent, you know, well, 40. Uh, uh, okay. For standard PLAs, they're all usually about the same price anyway. So it depends what you're talking about for a special filament, like a special glitter or something. Yeah. Definitely not. But for plain PLAs, get a good PLA. Get, mm -hmm. Don't get the cheapest bottom barrel PLA. You're probably not gonna have a good time. Uh, there's a reason why they're cheap. So something around like the twenty dollar mark or so, that's typical for PLA. Twenty to twenty five, yeah. that's what you're gonna be kind of looking into the range. There's a lot of great options. Um, you have to look around and see what works best for you. I'm not gonna give any specific recommendations, but you can see what I use and what works for me. I use a uh, printed solid. Polymaker, Prusament, uh, Sparta. I, I mean, everything that I've used has been really good. Uh, print bed. I was going to mention print bed. Protopasta. I, protopasta is 
beautiful, beautiful film. Yeah, and it's, it's nice and I think it's worth every penny. I think it's worth every yeah. penny. So, <laughs> um, a quick note on starting out. So, have we gotten to that question yet? Yeah. So the question was was posed. Uh, I guess this is a question for for everyone that's in chat. But yeah, what would you recommend? Um, and what would be if someone was starting out? If you had to give them five spools of filament, color type, you know, what would what would you do, and why? Yeah, so that... <laughs> I'll give you a couple seconds while mm -hmm. you're typing your responses. There might be some other brands, and let me know in chat. But Printbed does minis. These are kind of cool. All right, they're little two hundred gram spools, and you get five of them. So you get one kg but you get five different colors. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to just start out or get like a small collection of colors, something like that could be useful because it's 200 grams. It's not like a 50 gram sample. Yeah, the print bed minis. I haven't used them personally. I, <laughs> I like to get full spools for samples, but there's a lot of good colors in that range and you can get some pretty basic ones. Um, my experience with print bed has been pretty good. I printed off some stuff. I did a couple of, um, uh, I have, uh, I have like nacho colored print bed. It's kind of interesting. I'll have to find a good print for that. Maybe some tacos or nachos, but it's pretty good stuff. And <laughs> they generally print pretty fast or they ship pretty fast. Hey, hey, Mr. Rick says he started out using Inland and never had mm -hmm. any issues with it. We know that there are a few filament companies that um, are Inland. Is that is that correct? Yeah, in Inland isn't isn't yeah. a filament manufacturer. They're a white label, so they get yeah. different filaments from other brands. So depending on what you get, um, who knows? But a lot of Inland has been reported pretty good, and it, it, since it's available right in store, it's really nice to be able to go into a store, grab filament, and leave. Um, I again, I'd probably recommend like a PLA Plus if you're just going to go into a store and grab something mm -hmm. random. Something like PLA Plus generally. Uh, for beginners, especially, it'll probably print a little better. They design it to just work a little better, but your mileage may vary depending on every single filament. Uh, this whole entire episode, your mileage may vary based off of filament type, filament brand, filament dryness, how wet a filament is. There's a comment on stringing. Uh, where'd that go? Oh, sorry. Yes. Someone asked if uh, PETG was, would string, was stringing easily, would string easily. Yeah. So if you don't dry your PETG, if I leave it out and if I'm in a moist environment, it will string significantly. So yes, you do have to dry PETG. You can get away with maybe a new spool, um, but I like to print it out of a dryer. So an active dryer like mm -hmm. the Eboss Easy Dry, something kind of like this where you're printing out of it while it's drying. That's going to get your best results. So oh, that's even PLA. PLA generally isn't affected as much for moisture. This is a long topic behind it, but TLDR, not as much, but PTG, ABS, ASA, heavily nylons, TPUs, anything that isn't PLA is very hydroscopic. It's, it's, it's a polymer, it's plastic. It's gonna absorb moisture. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the printing process. At lower temps, moisture doesn't affect filaments as much. At higher temps, it affects it significantly. Yeah. So we're getting some answers here in chat. Uh, hey, Mr. Rick says black, white, gray, blue, and red. Yep. Uh, then we have black, white, blue, yellow, red. Then we have ash gray. <laughs> then we have uh, black, white, yellow, and blue. Um, so yellow, uh, yeah. So uh, in chat the other day, um, I believe it was Krusty that, that suge suggested gray. And he said gray is a good color because it can show a lot of the imperfections. Um, and I forget what all the other reasons were. So what, why would you choose gray? Would gray, would gray for be me, on your list? It's a nice color and it's probably one of my most recommended. If you find a good gray, I've gotten some grays mm -hmm. that are just ugh, ugly. Um, but a good gray, this is... I would not recommend Polyterra for beginners. I'll, I'll put that out there because mm -hmm. of, uh, if you don't have all the settings dialed in perfectly, you might struggle. Um, but Polyterra looks pretty nice. And this color specifically, if you go for a lighter gray, 
it makes a lot of models just work. You can print almost anything in gray. Black, I find to be too black because if you have something black, well, it's black. It's not going to pop. White, cheap white filament does not look good. Um, you see a lot of layer lines, especially if you have a light coming down from the top, it does not look that good. So something gray is kind of a middle of the road if you're going for a basic mm -hmm. filament. Yeah. And Bob Kern says, pick whatever colors you want, except white. Yeah. And why would you say that? Uh, besides the potential ad additional abrasiveness of white, <laughs> which sure, it's probably a little more abrasive. Uh, the main issue for me is looks. I think I have some models, but um, even some colors just don't show layer lines that well. Yeah. Um, but so when first... you're trying to get, yeah, when you're, as someone just said in chat, if you're trying to get detail, you're not, you're not going to see it well. Yeah. Uh, so here, I mean, I can't even take a picture of this, but um, any imperfections? Wow. I'm not, okay. Looks great on camera when it's blown out and out of focus, but uh, there's a lot of layer lines, a lot of little imperfections that you can see with white color. But it does look really good in some applications, <laughs> like that skull I did. Mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend having white at some point because you'll need it yep. for multicolor. But um, it, it looks really good. It's hard. And as Bob, yeah, as Bob says, white is typically overloaded with pigments to make it white. And so they, they can end to lead to uh, print issues. So, yeah. you know, that's and I also found, oh, um, I get a lot of artifacts. So I had to figure out, I actually found out there was a problem with my printer because I was trying to print something white, pure white, and uh, ended up with all these little specks of, you know, filament that was That's on my true. nozzle or in my yeah. nozzle. So. If you don't use a sock and you just have filament like drooping down, it'll get right on the print and ruin it. That's how I know. <laughs> but white's a nice color to have. There's a lot of stuff that you'll want to print in white mm -hmm. and that you probably only have to print in white, like a penguin or I don't have much a Hello Kitty. White. Uh, a, a rook printer, you know, something like that. A rook printer, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's Ghosts. Cool. For Halloween, yeah, yeah all sorts yeah, of ghosts, things. I've done yeah. those, um, but Hello stuff Kitties. that can only be printed in white, it's nice to have. Uh, lithophanes, there you go. Lithophanes, mm -hmm. geez, that's a huge one. If you want to print lithophanes, uh, something like a, a plain PLA white, that works really good. Um, yeah, so what else? What else do we have? have here? Um, yeah, some people said uh, um, a matte color, black, white, yellow, blue, yellow, red. So, you know, you get your basic colors. Mm -hmm. um, then you have so something to build from uh, gray, blue, and red. Of course, Hatchbox, matte ash gray. That was the <laughs> one recommendation. Yeah, and, it's, a lot of um, brands will have a very mm -hmm. specific color. Like they'll have yeah. their color. For and example, really the Sunlit Grass yeah. Green, it's mm -hmm. a specific color that you can probably only yeah. get from that brand. Yeah. And print divisions has a, has, has advice there too. That's, that's especially for someone that's starting out. He said, I like to try using filaments that the slicers have presets for, which make things slightly easier. Um, I use, actually, I use Bob's advice for a Prusa slicer for my printer and almost everything is done with the Prusament, um, settings, but that, that was his advice, but they, they also do have other filaments in, in the slicer. That's another very long topic. I don't know if we've gone over it too much, <laughs> but calibrating filament, calibrating profiles. Even if your filament is in the pro, it, like in the profile, you'll still want to run test prints and make sure yes. that your flow is calibrated, your temperature works well, it looks decent, etc. So run some tests before you just take a brand new spool and print ten thousand things in it. Yep, and you can do something as simple as the, uh, as we call them, the test discs, but the the uh the z level z leveling mm -hmm. um discs and that that'll give you an idea of how how your um obviously i use it for everything but it, it gives you an idea of how everything uh prints and also if you print it with like for example if you print it with black and then you're switching to white it kind of helps clean things out more and yeah you're having fun so and i also use these now as a little palette when i'm using my paint markers nice. so then they're, they're always yeah. getting used for something. So, yeah. 
So that's that's one thing that that you can do. Yeah, so everybody sort of shared. So I guess the starter kit they would do some some of the primary colors, and also have uh, have gray or or black, gray and black. So those seem to be the the predominant um, colors. But no one mentioned silks. So <laughs> that is something that, like I said, I learned the hard way. A lot of people learn the hard way because with silks. Um, you end up with, uh, you have really have to learn how to print with silks, not just the strength, but also the stringing. And yeah, if you do not have a heat gun, is clogging, you end up, is, <laughs> yes. Use high quality silk if you're going to print silks to help. I'll put it that way. Um, I've, I've gotten some cheap Amazon silks because they look fun. It causes mm -hmm. more hassle than I would like to admit. <laughs> um, yeah. This is interesting. So if you're printing lithophanes, print in solid, um, so Jesse filament, quarter white. Mm -hmm. Apparently it has uh, less filament or less pigment in it to allow more light to come through. That would make sense. Um, that'd be interesting to try out. I typically use a PLA Pro from Polymaker. It seems okay. to work pretty well. It's going to depend. Some colors are actually more white than others. Polymaker's whites are very yellow. They're very like warm mm -hmm. when you look at it under light. So white is a very, very big topic. We'll have to do that another day, but <laughs> just get a good white. I would, I might actually have to try out the, the Jesse white if it's good for little things. Yeah. I think when, uh, I remember when Chris Perillo started printing, that was one of the ones and he did, he did a bunch of lithophanes. Mm. And of course, Matt German is the, the, the lithophane professional. There are actually, yes. there's quite a few people in chat that do lithophanes so uh and, and get advice from those people too of what they would use for for their uh for their yep. lithophanes so what would you get if you had to pick um let's say not one of the the top and of course the top five colors in general in terms of sales are black white gray red and blue like those are the colors that everyone is just going to get what color would you get besides that for me, my, my dream color is Periwinkle. There's two companies that make Periwinkle. So I, I, I went, you know, I went for wacky colors right away. I, I, I love, I love color. As you can see behind me, I've got all kinds of stuff going on. So, um, I actually don't have a gray, which is kind of funny. I have silvers, I have charcoal, but I don't have a gray, which, um, you know, uh. yeah, I have, I have chrome, but yeah, I don't have gray. So uh, I I would I would love to have a gray. That's actually kind something one. that I steel gray. Mm -hmm. If you're going for a kind of an interesting color, if you get like a metal looking filament, again, it can make your models look like metal. So mm -hmm. there's uh, different types of like grays. There's bronze. Uh, a color that I quite like is the uh, uh, the metallic bronze. You know, it makes stuff kind of look like statues. So think about what the model's gonna look like in that color and decide off of that. But my recommendation, it has to be a blue. Yeah. There's too many, too many blues out there. Find a good color blue you like. Um, there's, there's too many to choose from, but find your favorite blue and your favorite shade. I'm kind of liking some of the darker blue colors. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, just, it just is what it is. Yeah, Even and I, I and I love blue. blues and purples, so I've got plenty of of those. Yeah, yeah. I greens yeah. look nice. All all the all the colors look nice. Just pick your favorite. Pick your favorite yeah. color. We're definitely yeah. We're blues, purples. Yeah, we're we're colorful I people could, though when, when it comes yeah. to filament. Yeah, I if I okay if I had one filament, one filament. Mm -hmm. Uh, one filament only i i still would do the uh do, do the nebula um by protopasta yeah. i would yeah that would be because like look at it it looks like it has tinsel in it it's beautiful so um but for a starter kit i would definitely have um a rainbow filament um a really fun metallic silk Still filament rainbow? give myself yep rainbow um a, a metallic one whether it was silver or chrome or there still isn't a great gold but 
you know, there are there are nice golds. Yeah, I, Actually, this this I haven't found a really good gold yet either. Yeah, I mean the the Polymaker like gold, gold is really nice. Gold. And the gold that's actually the gold that is in the uh, Sparta, the Sparta metal rainbow is the nicest gold I've ever had. And yeah, and I would do, I would do like a, sh a shimmery iridescent filament, and then I'd probably do something like a charcoal, or or a yeah, I would do something mm -hmm. like that. That would be my my starter kit. But I'm not uh, the average. I don't think I'm the average person printing. I get some yellow. Good yellow. Yeah? Yep. Yeah, good yellow. What's your favorite yellow? Do you have a favorite yellow? I actually like the the polymaker yellow. <laughs> it's, I, I, I like it quite a bit. It's not that yellow. I like yellow. the pale yellow. My favorite is the pale mm. yellow. It looks like yellow. butter. So Yeah, the light yellow. This Where's... is... One of these is yellow. One of these is yellow. Uh, I'll let you determine. And the, the color is going to show it differently. But this is more of like an orangey yellow. It mm -hmm. looks nice. This is a, like an actual yellow. So careful with yellows. Turns out that no one standardizes on a yellow. Yeah. Yeah. But Easter Easter's coming, so you'll you'll want to have lots of fun pastels and and especially yellow. Maybe. You know, yellow Maybe there's gonna be packs coming packs. out, multicolor packs of Ooh, different perhaps multicolor holiday themed colors. Maybe. Speaking of uh, packs that are coming out and filament that that is existing and everything, um, we did get two new Poly Maker colors released today, released out into the wild or re-released the Peridot and the other one um, that was announced. Yeah, it was just announced on Twitter <laughs> that they're they're back in stock. Um, oh, okay. And but there was also big news coming from Prusa today about the xl so oh, apparently no, the 2kg spools <laughs> oh and 2kg spools yes <laughs> so the the xl is going to be available to the the first day order people starting in may i believe so that's fantastic and there's people in chat that are beta testers for for the xl so mm. if anyone has questions you should probably ask in chat and people might might be able to yeah, sort or of really give you some um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe other places. But <clears> the <throat> XL is going to be a very interesting printer. Keep your oh, eye on it. I I was wrong. I will. We will put the the release. We will put the press release in in the the links below. I thought it was May. Krusty's saying not May. So we'll see. Yeah, I don't know any there. Soon. <laughs> yeah, releasing on Friday. Soon. On a Friday. On a Friday. Oh, the first day will start shipping by the end of this this month. I guess uh, I, believe, I don't know. I believe that's what the thing okay. said, but just the that was my... just the single tool. Um, okay. Okay. May is the tool changer. Okay. So if you're buying it for a tool change, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. But okay, it should still be a decent printer just for a single like tool. It's a big mm -hmm. printer. It's like huge. It's bigger than than this thing over here. It's like it's big, big boy yeah. printer. And and I'm huge. sure that. There will be people using it on Maker Deck because we have some yeah. friends in Maker Deck that uh, yeah might have. Yeah, access. it's all it's all open in the front, so you can just like take an image right from the front. Oh, that'd be it's gonna be nice. Yeah, we're seeing all sorts of all sorts of uh, <laughs> we're, we're seeing all sorts of uh, all sorts of fun so on. fun fun things happening <laughs> on uh, on Maker Deck for sure. Um, so that yeah, that was the I guess the the two big well not big pieces of news the, the new filament is always great and mm -hmm. uh yeah but finding out some some news on the the xl of course is exciting for for a lot of people so we're we're interested in seeing what will come come from that speaking of exciting we're gonna be doing mm -hmm. a draw for some polymaker filament so if you want to try yeah. a new filament um you can fill out the giveaway it's pinned in the video chat and description yes mm-hmm Okay, it's in the description. Fill that out. We'll be drawing in about one minute. Let me get that set up. Mm -hmm. And you can try something new. I want you to try a new style of filament. If you haven't tried Polyterra, try that. If you haven't tried a like PETG and you print it, can print it, try it. Even get some ASA. You can print open air ASA. Keep in mind your hot and has to support it. 
or restrictions if you don't and everything. have or like me if you don't have gray <laughs> get some gray get some gray yeah colors you don't have um oh i really i like the metallic silver it's really it's a really nice color there's so many good colors out there it's so hard to pick like if you can have one color what would you pick um for example this is prussian mint orange it's not gonna show mm -hmm. up in camera but it's such a nice color and it's so different than any of the other ones i have and in some models i'd want to print in this color if i want to print another color rough <laughs> asa does have vocs um but is less in general than abs i would still enclose it i would still vent it and i would still be safe around it yeah to film it we can go on all night about this yeah we, just we barely <laughs> touched yeah we've even touched um I, have, I haven't even as? touched my filament. <laughs> no, I, I barely touched mine. So, yeah, someday someday we'll just like empty empty our our, uh, our whole thing and go through all our filament. I have mine organized. Actually, I organized it by um, by brand mm. and and by color. So I've, I've I've done that for now. I'll probably end up giving up and just having it all done. Um, probably all done by by color. But uh, probably this one. That's my favorite co-extruded filament. Your, um, your favorite co-extruded? Ah, oh, mine's I right really here, like sunset. too. It, it looks really nice. It's, uh, how my how do you colors. pronounce that? Sunset? Sunset. Yeah. Yeah, sunset. I don't know why everyone makes fun of me. <laughs> but yeah, and we, we, have, we share a similar the, taste, right? Yeah. Cause... And mine is the prismatic yellow pink from uh, from Sparta because it looks like uh, bubble gum and... and Depending on how you print it, uh, it looks like the, the the rose from Beauty and the Beast, or you know, mm. use your imagination. But it's it's, nice. it's fun. It's yeah. I love so. I love dual co-extruded filaments. I like rainbows. I'm excited for more variety in those, like maybe some mm -hmm. matte filaments, matte co-extruded, regular PLA co-extruded. So it's a little more useful. Um, that'd be cool. And as I mentioned, filament stories. Uh, her video about the rainbow filaments is going to be your ultimate guide, especially to the quick changing uh, rainbow filaments and also explaining what filaments like like this, this calling itself a rainbow, what it what it really means. So, yeah, um, always, always go to the expert. And Courtney has done an amazing job of, of sharing the joy of a filament uh, with everybody and just sharing a wealth of knowledge. She also she also endorsed the K2 clip. And speaking of wealth, let's yes. uh, close off the giveaway. So unpin that, move from the description, and let's do a draw. Mm-hmm. Let's see if my screen sharing still works. I'm gonna switch over to, uh, I'll do it manually. And capture. Hey, that's there the one. And I'll full screen that. Perfect. All right. So this is our eighth stream. I need a number between one and eight. One and eight in chat and we'll shuffle. So uh, once again, this is for a spool of Polymaker filament. Uh, if you are international, it's for PLA, PG, ABS, ASA. You will get to pick one spool and it'll be sent directly to you. Uh, if you're in the US or Canada, it's for a $35 coupon code to the respective website with free shipping where you can buy anything on the site that you want. You don't have to use it all, you can use more, etc. Go crazy. Let's see. I'm seeing lots of sixes. I see a six, a six, and a six. Let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good luck, everyone. Who's it gonna be? It is Geek Toy Box. Would you look at that? Congratulations. Congratulations. Are you in the chat? Um, I have your Let's email. See. I can reach out to you via the email, or if you are on Discord, I'll message you there. I'll find you. I'll find you. Always lurking. All right. Want to do one more? Yeah, let's do let's do one more just for the we talked about it. so much so much filament and again huge shout out to Polymaker. 
uh, for providing film to both of us for our testing and being mm -hmm. able to show off models. It's nice to be able to print something, especially your friends or your favorite models in the colors that are nice to show off. So thank you. Uh, do we not see them in chat? Oh, are you not here? I thought you were just here. Oh. Do we have a geek? We have a geek toy box in chat. Still waiting on a response. I, I have their email. All right. So let's let's do another one. Yes, and also Here. for me, I get I get lots of filament from Sparta. <laughs> so All right. If you, uh, yeah, you use code make maker deck with Sparta. Wake you up. can get ten percent off. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I think this is, might be a new one. I don't know. This is... Daddy's... Wow. Setter? <laughs> dead. Dead. I am dead reading this name. Are you in chat? Oh, 3 Deer. Maybe it's Daddy's 3 Deer. There three we go. Deer. Is it Daddy from, is it Daddy from, uh, from Twitch? Too. It's you. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll reach out to name. Congratulations. You are in the chat. <laughs> and you just won a spool of polymaker filament. Perfect. Daddy. So I'll reach over via email or if you're on Discord, I'll reach out there. One of the one of the ways. Perfect. So I'll give I'll give Geek Toy Box a minute to come back into the stream. Uh, there you are. <laughs> All right, that was quick. Perfect. Congratulations. Perfect. So you get a spool of polymaker filament. Right. Um, also we should mention uh, of course very importantly, uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. That was interesting. Um, one of the uh, sponsors of uh, of Maker Deck is uh, is sorry, Streamyard. Streamyard there, Streamyard, uh, and that's actually how we're we're able to to stream this whole thing. And um, we've said before, <laughs> we maybe we shouldn't be allowed to. But we do anyway. So um, StreamYard, yes, StreamYard is a sponsor of, of uh, Maker Deck and the overall Locker Gnome uh, streaming. Uh, so oh, StreamYard has been amazing. Like in terms of streaming, you don't do anything. You log in and you stream. With OBS, I'm always messing with stuff. Sometimes cameras get frozen mm -hmm. and you switch with scene, your cameras are frozen. It's just having StreamYard is so nice for simplicity. And the yeah. fact that you can just drag people on, oh, mm -hmm. it's great. And we have maxed it. We have maxed out the what they felt were the limitations with Maker Deck because we yeah. have ten people on the screen from all over, the, up to ten people on the screen from all over the world uh, for forty eight hours at a time. The stream link can actually stay for. We've had it stay for over two weeks. I'm probably going to refresh the stream tomorrow, but uh, definitely it, it's we stretched the limits. Uh, we had a problem um, with one of the videos that I produced uh, the interviews last week. I was able to go into Streamyard, clip that, it, clip the two hours of a video, and then I was able to edit it. I could have edited it. Um, in the Streamyards, in in, in Streamyard, um, so it is. It's been a really, really great experience. And if you're looking at streaming, doing things like this type of a show, um, you can record podcasts. There's all sorts of all sorts of things with Streamyard. So um, before they were a sponsor, we were we were definitely um, stretching it to the limit. So it, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting to see what comes in future because they also would like to talk to us about yeah. how we stretch stretch it to the limit so yeah if you have any suggestions make sure to leave your feedback um they are looking to improve we're looking to improve so yeah. all right is there anything else we have on our list anything upcoming I'll, I'll remind you guys again um over on my twitch channel on the 25th i'll be doing a pretty big mm -hmm. event with a bunch of giveaways and we'll have some fun there so mm -hmm. it's always a good time make sure to stop on by and say hello this sunday uh we are going to be doing our first ever maker showcase um chris and i will be hosting that and we may have some special guests 
Uh, but what we're going to be doing is highlighting our makers. So everything that you've put into show and tell, uh, especially if you have information and links to the models, uh, we'll be highlighting that um, on Sunday. That's at 1.30 p.m. Pacific. So that's 3.30 p.m. Eastern. And for the other time zones, you know, we can sort it out. But uh, we're going to be doing uh, a maker showcase, which is something I, I have done quite often during Coffee Talk, too. We really like showing what people have been making on Maker Deck or or their their different their different uh, projects. And yes, Ron's army uh, mini RV life. There is coffee talk tomorrow, and the reason that you will know that is if you go into our Discord and you look at events, um, anything that is scheduled is now being listed um, as an event I like on that. Discord. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. So that's something we're so. trying to keep consistent with so people um yeah so people hello and, Jano, actually, and good night <laughs> <laughs> yes and and uh also as i've mentioned before if you're interested in uh streaming on maker deck uh doing a show whether it's with your voice or if you want to do something here on youtube uh certainly get in touch there's different ways I, there will be a link in in the description here uh especially for coffee talk Usually we do those on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but this week we did one on Sunday. We did Java with Jano. So <laughs> there, there's all sorts of opportunities for you to be involved. And tomorrow on Coffee Talk, I will also be sharing the full volunteer document for, uh, for, for your involvement in Maker Deck. So we want to have people uh, feel, feel, some people have really jumped in um, from from the from the very beginning, and uh, yeah, we will. I'll, I'll be having a formal announcement of that tomorrow during coffee talk. Does I make that fail? <laughs> uh, so how? Why did it fail? It failed because in Flipper, I set my Max Z to be 180 when it's a 300 millimeter printer because I copied a config over. I didn't check it. Ah. So Flipper does have its faults, and it's usually user errors so. <laughs> but that's okay this, it did look nice it yeah kind of cool this is what that and so what will you has. what will you end up doing with that probably not much um there's some <laughs> other issues on it at the bottom mm -hmm. um test prints are rough and a lot of times you want to keep something like this sometimes you just have to throw it away or you can find a use for it i could use it as a outdoor like uh you know i could do that i could put it a flower in the outdoors but there you go. <laughs> anyway, the pile of I save like most of my prints anyway. There's a there's a thing of prints like right behind me. Uh, sent yeah, sent prints, to the yeah. island of lost parts. Yes, and some people melt them down into bricks for their garden. Yeah, there's all sorts mm -hmm. of things that, that you can do. Lots of stuff you can do. I, I even use failed prints to uh, store things because I've you know figured yep. at least for my use. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> that was a pretty good stream today. I yeah, hope you guys enjoyed you. it. This has been Z and Zed Show. My name is Z. And, and I am Zed. And we are 3D printer peoples. We, we are. We with are. Both of us with about a year of experience under our belt. Almost. So we don't Almost. claim to we don't claim to know everything and we don't claim to know anything. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think that's that's right. There's our disclosure. So uh but thank Disclosure. you, everybody. I know nothing. <laughs> Just a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, thank you, everybody, who joined us uh, live. And if you're watching it after, please leave a comment, uh, questions and suggestions for, for future episodes. We are going to explore something. With We have a, an option to have a, a Z and Z and Z at some point. So you, you know, can fill in Zs. the blanks. And we're, we're looking at, you know, having some guests on every once in a while. Um, long time watcher, first time caller. So uh, we enjoy having you with us, whether it's live or, or later. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a Got comment. Suggestion. <laughs> and that being said, have a good night and bye. Yeah. Merci beaucoup. Et à bientôt.